Thanks, Marcus. Hey, everybody. I'm Sean Hammond with PremierGuitar.com. We're at Music Mesa 2011 at the Jet City booth with Marcus on guitar. Doug Wyatt here. Doug, how's it going? Good evening and welcome. Hey, it's morning. If it, well, actually, no. It's, it's evening afternoon. in America. Yeah, it's afternoon here. Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> 12.30. Good afternoon. Okay. Good day, Sean. I'm, it's middle of the night for me. Um, we're here looking at two new things for you. First, we're going to start off with the Jet City 20 yes. head. You want to tell us about that? Sure. Yeah, this is actually called the JCA 22H. Uh, most people are familiar with our JCA 20H. It's been on the market for about a year now. Uh, it's a really popular single channel 20 watt all tube head designed by Michael Soldano. And a lot Based on his Atomic. 16, yeah. During the past year, many people commented to us that they wish they could have another channel and an effects loop. So uh, this amp comes out next month, and we've added a tube-driven effects loop and the famous Soldano SLL, the, the uh, Super Lead Overdrive high gain channel, is also in this amp. So what, what you heard a moment ago was the amp that you're familiar with, the crunch channel, as we call it. And I'll switch it over now to the higher gain channel. And, and Marcus will play some leads, right, Marcus? All right, Doug, so that was the lead channel, the SLO-based yes. channel. What do you want to tell us about that? For people who aren't familiar with that, even, you know, some, a lot of people know the SLO is kind of what put Michael Sodano yeah. on the map, right. but yeah. for those who don't know that, why don't you tell us a little bit? Sure, okay. Uh, so Michael's philosophy has always been to design a very simple, straight ahead, no frills uh, amplifier design. And uh, because of that, the amplifier is very responsive to the guitarist. Uh, they work really well with pedals. Um, uh, our reliability is really high because there are very few parts in there. Uh, but the, the one thing that he did that was most important is he refined his overdrive circuit over years, tweaking it and getting it just right. And, and once he got that special formula, um, he stuck with it and that's what we've put in this amp. This is the first time that that channel has ever been available in a low wattage amp. So that, that's why we're really happy about this. And that sound from the SL, SLO 100 made guys like, okay, didn't make them famous, but it was used by huge guys like Jerry Cantrell, yes. who, and you know, you could name them better than I, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, maybe not as well as Mike could, but yeah, I mean, Clapton played it, Mark Knopfler played it, uh, Rat played it. So the, all those tones are in there. Very cool. Okay, now another really cool thing you guys have going that is new is these little glowing tube-like things down here. You want one? Robert's retro valve. Okay, so tell us that one more time. Okay, yeah, Robert's retro valve, and these are invented by a guy called Doug Roberts, who actually is an old friend of Michael Soldano's. They go way back. The first amplifier that Mike ever built. He built with Doug Roberts. They did it together. And Doug worked on the preamp section mostly, and Mike worked on the power amp section. And um, obviously, over the years, Mike became a famous amplifier maker, and uh, Doug worked on this technology on his own time at home. He, he's actually a, an engineer for Philips during the day, and at night, when he turns into a superhero, he, <laughs> he engineers this product. And uh, it, it's an analog tube replacement device. I'm on standby here, so I can just pull one out, and you can see that it's cool to the touch. Yeah, so this is the hard plastic housing. Yep. Sorry, hard plastic housing here. And why don't you tell us a little bit about the actual technology inside of it? OK, I, I, I'm not going to tell you everything about what's inside of here. Including the patented stuff. OK, there, there are four patents on this device. Seriously? Yeah, for real, yeah. Uh, there are four patents on there. It, it's a completely analog, solid-state device. There's no uh, funky DSP happening anywhere in here. Uh, there's a little tiny circuit board in there with a transformer and a FET. And um, there's three different colors, three different models. The amber one that you can see in the middle there on the second gain stage is designed to be uh, at sort of a nominal gain. So if you replace the 12AX7 with this one, the gain would be about the same as what Yes, yeah. And so the blue one is cooler because it's about 20% less gain. 
and then obviously the red one is hot, so we put that in the front, uh, uh, the first gain stage, and it's about 20% hotter than a 12AX7. Some of the advantages of this are kind of going to be obvious. I'm sure they're less um, fragile than tubes, and I imagine do they last longer too, or what are some of the other advantages? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for bringing that up, actually. Um, yeah, so they're completely not fragile. <laughs> Uh, very uh, robust and in fact we've got a lifetime guarantee on them uh, and also it's not just about that durability from transportation but they'll also never burn out like a like a tube will eventually so feasibly you could have this these in your amp for the rest of its life yeah forever and uh, they work completely uh, uh, at home with glass tubes as well so you could put them in any position you wanted to you you could just keep one in the phase inverter here and put glass tubes in the front uh, they'll never be microphonic you know the, the amp can bounce around or vibrate or ship it anywhere and uh, the tubes are always going to be completely reliable okay Doug so yes. probably the natural question for a lot of players out there who maybe know not a ton about tubes, but know enough to know different types and what sounds good. They're going to wonder, is this possible to take this technology to power tubes? And if so, are you guys going to be doing that? I'd like to thank you for phrasing that question. It's so easy for me to understand. <laughs> because I think I know what you're talking about. Yes, it's entirely possible. Uh, we're working on a lot of things. So I, I can't tell you exactly when we would do a power tube, but I can tell you that Doug Roberts is, it has lots of good ideas. It sounds pretty darn tube-like. It is very darn tube-like. <laughs> Okay. That's the thing is, it's still a tube amp. It still runs on those really high voltages that a tube amp runs on. It's not a solid state amp. It's just the tubes have been replaced by a solid state device. All right, Doug, where can people go to find out more about these amazing little devices? So the Roberts Retro Valves will be on the Jet City Amplification website next month-ish, and that's www.jetcityamplification.com. And they'll be cool. available this summer. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Doug. Have a good show. Marcus, thank you. I'm Sean Hammond, and you're watching PremierGuitar.com.